Okay, with just under a month to go before the January 14 Jamaica Football Federation elections, uh, Raymond Anderson and his real solid action team um, launched their manifesto yesterday, and Lenny Aldred has that report. Trust is essential for the efficient running of any venture. The JFF is no exception of this rule. Trust loss is often hard to restore. A promise of trust, transparency, and rebranding. The foundations that Jamaica Football Federation presidential candidate Raymond Anderson presented in his 26-page manifesto. The manifesto launch was held Thursday evening at the Courtley Hotel Suite in New Kingston. Outlined are eight key areas that his team will focus on if elected. Rebranding, youth development, local elite squad, restoring financial stability, women's football, regaining stakeholders' trust, infrastructure, and qualifications. But what will be his starting point if given the nod at the polls? We want more football to play wide across section of Jamaica. So we'll identify the areas that need a small amount of finance and start to build the field. And that is the beginning of us, start to build field. And if you remember, they said Raymond the Builder, we will start a build field. Anderson stated that there are still concerns surrounding Pillar 3 ahead of the January 14 election date. I said no, it's not cleared up because legally we have to, we have been dealing with a lot of things because we believe that some of them people are not being honest and clearing our mind that people signing people name etc those things are not honest so we know what we are going up against but we are equal to the task on the honest side so what we're doing now from the the, uh, the real solid action team are the new game plan we want to ensure that we get to the voters we want to tell them more about our manifesto we want to try to ask them to give us a chance the real solid action slate was also introduced. Anderson, presidential candidate, is a vice president of the current administration. Vying for the four vice president posts are Keith Wellington, president of the Intersecondary School Sports Association, ISA, and principal of St. Elizabeth Technical High School. When I was approached, and I've been approached by multiple persons from different camps, um, my mindset is that I'm willing to assist in whatever way. This is not something personal for me, so it's more of my commitment to help with the development of our youngsters. Having been asked, I, I, I only had some parameters as to how I would get involved. Um, one of the things that I I, I said was that I want to get involved, but I'm not going to be involved in any sort of big campaign and mudslinging or anything like that to prove that I am a better candidate than another one. So it wasn't a difficult decision, but I believe that it is the right decision. I think that where we are as a country and where football is concerned, we need a change of route. And I think that if there is an option available, then I should support it. Orville Powell, businessman and former owner of JPL outfit Montego Bay United. It's change. Seeing how when you sit and you listen to what that change is all about, I think there's, I've never heard such arguments from the, the now administration. We need change and we complain that we need change for the past couple of years. And when the opportunity came up, now to do change, we have people all over the place, you know, so when, to me, it's just for change. Jacqueline Cummings Martin, attorney at law and former member of the JFF Disciplinary Committee, and Donald Beckford, president of the St. Anne FA and general secretary of Mount Pleasant Academy. The ordinary directors are Carol Beckford, media specialist in marketing and public relations, and Wycliffe Dave Cameron, business consultant and former president of Cricket West Indies. 56 votes, please, help us to help you. History will be very unkind to you if you don't really get this RSA team in office. Thank you. Mm. This is, this, this is a, a gripping and riveting build-up to the January 14 elections, um, Ricardo, because um, Rickett seems confident, even though, based on the jostling that we are seeing, 
he's trying to ensure that he has his support in place because he recognizes that there is a serious challenge come, coming from Real Solid Action. Yeah, and the Real Solid Action team in recent weeks, Lance, has um, accused the Jamaica Football Federation of trying to pervert the outcome of the, the upcoming elections. Um, and you heard um, Raymond Anderson speak to the issues relating to um, Pillar 3 um, with um, new associations being formed and given the nod um, to vote over existing associations. Um, as far as I understand it, the Real Solid Action team um, has written um, to the Elections Committee and I suspect are um, awaiting responses now. The nominations are in. Um, and I guess we'll just have to see what happens um, in the build-up to January 14. Yeah, it is being inferred from the Real Solid Action team that they could go legal yeah. on, on challenging some of the moves that the current Jamaica Football Federation has made here, even though you'd have to step carefully on that because based on the FIFA statutes, um, uh, going, going the legal route and trying to overturn decisions that are made from a football administration standpoint could sometimes um, run afoul of FIFA statute. So I think Raymond Anderson and his team are moving carefully because they recognize that uh, not, not, not always, even if you feel you have a, have a strong case, it is a good idea to go legal. Well, I think it starts with the Electoral Committee. Yes. Um, and then from what they said at a recent press conference, they're also um, working closely or trying as much as possible to keep CFU, CONCACAF in the loop and if they have to go all the way to FIFA I think they are willing to do that um, but it does start with the Electoral Committee and depending on the ruling from the Electoral Committee um, then I think they'll have a better understanding of where they go from there but they feel that they have won a solid case and they have the evidence to back up the accusations mm -hmm. that they have uh, put forward and, and we know the story um, quite Quite well, Lance, because we've been covering this for a couple of months now in terms of what's been happening with the different pillars and specifically um, Pillar 3 um, with uh, a number of the organizations like Beach Soccer versus Beach Football um, and uh, organizations. The Coaches Association Coaches is association another one of the key ones. As well yeah. is another one of them. And uh, those associations in some instances um, formed after what was to be the deadline for yes. existing bodies and so on. So mm -hmm. a, lot to be, a lot to be worked yeah. out. And uh, it's, y you are right. You use the correct words, Lance, in terms of riveting yes. um, um, <laughs> build up to yes. the election because you know, it really is. Yeah, one of the things that I find mm -hmm. striking about um, sports administration and um, I think this goes for elections generally not only in sport but even national elections where there are so many diverse views as to the performance of of you know the the standing body in the case of the national elections the government and in this case the the performance of the Jamaica Football Federation because about six or seven weeks ago on a local TV interview with, I think it was TVJ, Michael Ricketts, um, his narrative was one of confidence that he didn't feel threatened by Raymond Anderson because his performance as the JFF president over the years speaks for itself. So his, his, his point was that um, based on his performance, Yeah, I think we just had a bit of a stutter there, but he seems confident that based on his track record as a, a president, um, there shouldn't be any threat, which I find striking because most people don't think that his track record is good.
But he, he is suggesting that, based on his track record, um, he doesn't feel threatened for the presidency. Yeah, and, and he said that as well when we spoke to him here on the Sports Mag Zone, Michael Ricketts. Um, and I think we had the conversation as well that it depends on the lens that you're looking through yes. um, that may determine where you stand on a matter like that. He is, for example, extremely confident that he has most of the parish associations. I think he quoted 18 um, of the votes um, coming from the parish associations, which would give him a massive edge. And if um, Raymond Anderson is unable to capitalize on those pillar three votes that many expected him to dominate, um, then Ricketts may well be the favorite. I guess you could call this one race to 29. Um, mm -hmm. 29 plus 27 is 56, right? So, yeah. yes, you need 29 votes um, to be the Jamaica Football Federation mm -hmm. president. And, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But I think so much more to happen yeah. in the build-up to this election. Yeah, and another angle that I'm looking at closely to, Ricardo, is the fact that the Kingston and St. Andrew Football Association, who has a caustic relationship with the Jamaica Football Federation, is actually backing Raymond Anderson. And um, I think from a, from a parish perspective, there is, I would suspect, a fear coming from parishes outside of Kingston and St. Andrew that there had been so many decades of Kingston and St. Andrew dominance of football administration and everything football in Jamaica that I see Ricketts using that as a tool that he could use to strengthen his parish support because he's going to tell the parish um, delegates that, you know what, Raymond Anderson wants to make Kasafa powerful again, the Kingston and St. Andrew Football Association. And I can tell you, outside of Kingston and St. Andrew, nobody wants Kasafa to become dominant because they're only a part of Jamaica. And we know the historical um, record of countries, of parishes, well, the, the rural area feeling that the city area is always, you know, pushed and always gets preferences. And... Um, I think Anderson will have to work hard to convince the parish affiliates that although he's embracing the Kingston and St. Andrew Football Association, he is in no way trying to suggest that the other parishes will fall into the background because Kasafa is so powerful. Yeah, and I hear you, Lance, but I, I, I believe that the current president really does have most of the parish associations already, and I don't suspect that is going to change. So I think who wins this election really does come down to pillars two and three, pillar two being the clubs um, at the top level on both the men's and women's side, and then uh, the affiliates like the Intersecondary School Sports Association and so on in pillar three. And so what it also means is that it comes down to the final decisions that are made in terms of who gets to vote in pillar three. Mm -hmm. And at this stage, I am not sure if anyone really knows where the pillar two votes are going to be going. So um, I think that's where the outcome of this election lies in really pillars two and three, because I think for the most part, Michael Ricketts will have majority of the pillar one support, which um, is the parish associations. Outside of St. Anne. Yeah, which is why I say most, <laughs> yes, because I clearly yes. there are a few. Maybe you'll see like a St. Thomas. Um, you pointed out St. Anne, maybe Portland. Who knows who may go the way of um, Raymond Anderson. But I think majority of them will go the way of Michael Ricketts. Um, and that pillars two and three then become extremely important. Um, and to be honest, is probably where Raymond Anderson can turn this election in his favor. But there is clearly still a lot of work to be done on both ends, on the end of Michael Ricketts and also on the end of Raymond Anderson. Yeah, I'm, I, I think you're right that it's very hard to predict this election. I'm, I'm not sure where it will go. I'm, I'm on record on this show as, as suggesting that if I were to rate the performance of uh, Mike Ricketts' administration as the Jamaica Football Federation boss, I'd, I'd score them one out of ten. And uh, I'm serious about it. Um, I know if, you're if, serious, Lance. That is what makes it funny. Yeah, my, my problem is that I, I'm not sure if Anderson's group will be any better than one out of ten. 
because I think there is a crisis of leadership in, in Caribbean sport, generally speaking. And I think the Jamaica Football Federation needs an upgrade. And uh, most of the uh, narrative that we got in that Lenny Aldred report use the word change. Mm -hmm. And I'm encouraged by that because what we are seeing as football administration in, in the past cycles, um, to me, represents failure and represents a lack of vision in taking the sport forward. And um, as I said, there is no guarantee that if Ricketts loses, the performance of the administration of football in the country will be any better than Ricketts is. I just know that Ricketts hasn't done a good job. And it is unfortunate that we don't have a situation where you can have confidence that um, you, you vote Ricketts out and be sure that the, the new team will, will perform significantly better than Ricketts has. Yeah, I think there is just so much more to say in the build-up to um, this election. But I also think we have a lot of time to say a lot of those things. Maybe not today, but for sure, another day. <laughs>